Hi Bobcats, let's look at a couple more examples of integrated rate law problems. In this example, we'll be given enough data that we can use the equation for an integrated rate law to solve for something. So let's take a look at this one. It says the first order rate constant for the decomposition of a certain antibiotic in water is 20 or at 20 degrees C is 1.65 per year. If a 6.0 times 10 to the minus third molar solution of the antibiotic is stored at 20 degrees C, what will its concentration be after three months? We're told in the statement of this problem that it's a first order reaction. And we are told that the rate constant is 1.65 per year. And we are asked to find what will the concentration be at time three months? Okay, already um, I'm seeing a potential problem here with units. Uh, and let me switch to a highlighter, see how this works. Um, we were given units of months and we were given units of years. So we're going to need to settle on one unit or the other to do our problem with. Um, I think it's probably easiest to do this in terms of years because that's what our rate constant's already given as. And so we just need to convert that time to years. And so three months is equivalent to a quarter of a year. All right, since it's a first order reaction, the first order integrated rate law says the natural log of a sub t is equal to minus kt plus the natural log of a naught. Remember, a naught means the, the concentration at time zero. We are looking for the concentration at time t, where t is a quarter of a year, right? So that quarter of a year is equal to t. Um, our initial concentration is the 6.0 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. That's how much we're starting with at time 0. That's our concentration. So let's plug some numbers in here and see what we can come up with. We're going to have minus k, and k is 1.65 per year times a time of 0.25 years plus, whoops, I'm running out of room here, the natural log of a naught, which is 6.0 times 10 to the minus 3. Okay, years multiplied by per year cancel out. And so, let's see, our left-hand side here is natural log of a sub t. I'm going to run all of those numbers through my calculator. Um, I've got... 1.65 times 0.25, uh, but there's also a negative sign out in front, so I'm going to change the sign. And then we're going to add to that the natural log of 6 times 10 to the negative 3. And I get a value for that right-hand side of negative 5.528. Now, when you look at your calculator, the natural log is the button that says LN. It's usually right next door to the base 10 log button, which says LOG. The opposite function of nat taking the natural log is E to the X, and that's usually the second function on the natural log key. So if I take E to the X on both sides of this, I'm going to have e raised to the natural log of a sub t is equal to e to the negative 5.528. Well, e to the natural log, those are opposite functions. They cancel out, like multiplying and dividing cancel out. So that leaves me with just a sub t. And over here on the right-hand side, if I do e to the x, where e um, e x is negative 5.528. I get a value of, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and make my calculator, put that in scientific notation. I get a value of 3.97 times 
10 to the minus 3 molar. So after three months, the concentration of this solution will have dropped from 6.0 times 10 to the minus 3 molar down to 3.97 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. And to keep good with significant figures, I probably should only keep two sig figs on that. So that would round to 4.0 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. Here would be another example of one of these integrated rate law problems. We're not given all three plots in this case, but we are given two of the three plots, and one of them is very clearly linear. Um, that first plot, the log plot, has quite a bit of curvature to it, but that second plot, the reciprocal plot, is uh, very much a straight line. And so we would say for um, the data given um, for this reaction, since the reciprocal plot is the most linear plot, this would be a second order reaction. And if we were asked to find the numerical value for the rate constant for k, we would need to find the slope of this line. And this particular problem the slope's not given because they don't give us the equation for the line of best fit, but we still can find it. We just need to pick two data points on the graph and calculate the slope between them. Um, I'm going to pick two data points that look like they're pretty darn close to grid lines. I'm going to go with this data point at time 0 and this data point at time 100. Now, I don't know exactly what the data set looks like, but if I were to take the slope between these two points, um, I'm going to work on the idea that that first point is 0 and 100, and that that second point is 100 for its x-coordinate and 150 for its y-coordinate. So if I were to take the slope, I would take delta y over delta x. So the bigger y value would be 150. The smaller y value is 100. The bigger x value is 100. And the smaller y value is 0. So that's going to give me 50 divided by 100 which is 0.5. So if I was asked to get a value for k, k would be equal to the slope, which is 0.5. Our objective was to use um, the integrated rate laws to predict concentration and time, which we worked an example of that, use graphical data to identify the order of a reaction, and then uh, we've been looking at these first and second order reactions. We threw in zero order as well. Um, we still haven't quite gotten to half-life. I believe that's coming up in the next section.